back on the review train here, and today we're going to talk about and review Eraser, 1996 action film which stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I did talk about this film when I did my Arnold Marathon, I think earlier this year, but I don't mind talking about this film again. I mean, it's definitely one of my Arnold favorites. I mean, you know, if I had a top five of Arnold films for me, this would definitely be up there. I mean, number one is obviously Commando. Uh, number two is Predator. Number three, I would have to say The Running Man. And this would be number four. I mean, I know that's pretty high. Some people may ask, why is it so high? You know, why do you put it above T2, Total Recall, True Lies, you know, End of Days, and so much more? Uh, the Terminator. I love those movies. You know, I love the first two Terminator films. I love, you know, True Lies. I love Total Recall. I love Twins. I love End of Days, Collateral Damage. But, you know, for me, Eraser, whenever I think about this film, and to me, what it represents is kind of like the last of that type of action film that was akin to his 80s work. You know, Eraser was that. I mean, it's like that last great old school action film that Arnold did. Because, you know, the same year, you know, he did Jing All the Way, which I enjoyed. That's one of my favorite holiday films. You know, unfortunately, a year later, he did Batman and Robin. But he rebound, you know, with End of Days, which is a great movie, definitely underrated. The Sixth Day is okay. Uh, collateral Damage is solid. T3 I'm not a fan of. But, you know, later he came back with The Last Stand. You know, that was a good, you know, that was a good movie. But none of those like none of those movies felt like a straightforward action film. You know, where Eraser again was that. I mean, it felt like something he would have done back in the 80s. I mean, if you would have changed a couple of things here, you know, this could have been like a sequel to Commando. Uh, you know, again, maybe in some other universe. Now, unfortunately, they didn't make a sequel, a directed video sequel. God knows why. I mean, you have no Arnold, no Chuck Russell directing. I think you had the same writer, that's it. But, yeah, I'm not watching that. <laughs> So I don't know why they made a directed video sequel. I mean, you're really, you're really stretching, you know, when you have to go that far to make a sequel to Eraser, 25 years after the fact. But you, this is the best. But, you know, directed by Chuck Russell, you know, underrated director. Chuck Russell also directed it prior to this, Elm Street 3. He directed The Blob from 88, The Mask with Jim Carrey, uh, later on directing uh, The Scorpion King, which is okay. You know, it's not as good as those movies. And I know he's still directing. I think he directed that one movie with uh, Travolta. What was it called? I Am Wraith or whatever that film is. Um, never seen, but I know he directed that. I want to say he directed something else recently. I saw his name attached, but I forgot the name of it. So Chuck Russell, he's still directing. He's an underrated director, but I don't think that whatever you know he puts out nowadays is going to be as good as as this film or The Blob or The Mask and whatnot. But I'm a fan of the guy. Now, get into the plot here of the film, so. You have our main character, John Kruger, played by Arnold. He's this U.S. Marshal, and he works for this uh, witness protection program. And he erases the identities of people that are enrolled in the program. And now his new assignment is to protect uh, Lee Cullen, uh, played by Vanessa Williams, who does a good job in the film. And her character works for this you know, weapons manufacturer company, and she discovers that the company she works for is selling to terrorist groups. So now Kruger has to protect her 
you know, at the same time, he's working with his uh, fellow agent, uh, played by James Caan. And you find out that, you know, James Caan's character is involved in this plot. And he's a turncoat. Uh, so James Caan's character is after Vanessa Williams. So, you know, Arnold has to protect her. And that's kind of the plot here to this film. But the cast here, you know, Arnold does a great job as John Kruger. It's a badass character. No complaints whatsoever. Vanessa Williams is great support. I mean, she really held her own throughout the movie. You know, she wasn't some damsel in distress. Uh, again, she really held her own. I thought she was likable. And her and Arnold had a good rapport uh, going on. I thought they had a good chemistry. James Caan, he's our villain here. Uh, rest in peace, James Caan. Uh, great actor. You know, from Misery, the original Rollerball. You know, Thief, really good film. And so much more. Uh, again, he plays this corrupt, you know, agent here in the film that, you know, he's involved with this whole plot of stealing weapons. I thought he was a great villain. He was a believable, uh, villain and him and Arnold had some good scenes together. You have James Coburn in the film who plays the chief and unfortunately he's passed away. You also have Robert Pastorelli in the film. You know, he's the guy that Arnold helps in the beginning, in the opening of the film, and he comes back later. And unfortunately, he's passed away. There's actually quite a few people in the film that have passed away, unfortunately. But Robert Pastorelli, you've, I know you've seen this guy before. He was in uh, the Murphy Brown series back in the day, but he's been in quite a few films like, you know, Dances of Wolves, um, the film Michael with John Travolta. Uh, get shorty But he was a good actor and he was a lot of fun here in this movie. He was kind of like, you know, the sidekick almost uh, But he was a lot of fun You also have James Cromwell. Yeah, he appears in the film uh, He's been a lot of films, you know, the Green Mile Explorers uh, You're looking at the cast here Danny Nucci yeah, He's he has a bit part in the film uh, Nick Chungland. Yeah, Nick Chungland. I know you've seen this guy before. He's the guy on the airplane that is like, he, you know, he's talking to Arnold. Do you ever get tired of babysitting scum? Yeah, but in your case, I'll make an exception. <laughs> Great line. Yeah, that guy, that's Nick Chungland. Um, yeah, Mark Rolston. You know, he appears in the film. Uh, he was in Rush Hour. He was in Aliens. A recognizable actor. Uh, Joe Vettorelli. Uh, he was in, I remember, was it Analyze This? And I think the sequel too. And you know, unfortunately, he's passed away. Andy Romano. Uh, he is a bit part in the film. I remember he was in Under Siege. Uh, Alec, no, not Alec, but Oleg Kropa. At the finale, in the finale of the film, he's like this Russian you know, mobster type. Uh, he's been in a few movies. He was one of the bad guys in Blue Streak. And I think he was one of the burglars in Home Alone 3. So, I mean, if, again, Arnold does a great job here. Vanessa Williams is a great support. And a really good supporting cast of uh, really good actors. And like I said, a lot of the people here in the cast have unfortunately passed away James Kahn, James Coburn, Robert Pastorelli, uh, Joe Vitarelli, you know, like in the third act where, you know, Arnold, uh, gets the help of those union guys. Like, I think like out of the four, like three are no longer around. Yeah. Because I think that one of them is Tony Longo. Yeah. Tony Longo, I think he's passed away. So out of the four people there, of those union guys, uh, there's only one that is still around. Which is sad. You know, that some of these people that have passed on. But, you know, great cast. And, you know, what I really enjoy and love about this film, one is the action. I mean, there's a lot of great action here throughout the movie. I mean, the film opens up with an action scene where Arnold is saving... 
Robert Pastorelli, and that was a great opening. And then later on where he goes on this mission to, like him and James Caan, they work together to get this girl out. Um, like they go to this cabin and that's where James Caan's character, you know, you see that he's the villain. He kills the girl. And then you get to the plane where, you know, they're both on the plane and James Caan drugs Arnold. And then when Arnold wakes up, you know, he finds out that James Caan uh, took his weapon. And that's where you get into some action there on the plane, where you get into a shootout. And you got some great stuff there where, you know, Arnold's hanging on the side of the plane. And, you know, that was fun. I mean, I know a lot of people make fun of that. And, you know, the stuff where Arnold is in the air and shooting at the plane. You know, a lot of people make fun of that and poke holes in it. But I don't care. You know, to me, it's escapism entertainment. Um, it's a lot of just great action. I, I really enjoy it. I can't help it. And, you know, where he's falling down and then he lands in the junkyard and he's like, what is this? And the kid's like, Earth, welcome. <laughs> so that was fun. I mean, and then later on when they break into Cyrez. Uh, the company that Vanessa Williams works for to retrieve this disc because you have Arnold you have Vanessa Williams and Robert Pastorelli and Robert Pastorelli goes undercover as this pizza guy and he fakes a uh, seizure you know which is funny that was a funny scene and then you get to the third act where you know they take Vanessa Williams Arnold has to get her back and he's using these rail guns which I love the railgun. You know, to me, it's one of my favorite movie weapons. You know, and like after this film, you didn't really see the railgun anymore. Like, you never really saw much of the railgun after that. Like, it didn't appear in any other film or what have you. I mean, I remember, like in the game Perfect Dark, you had some type of railgun in the game, but you never really saw much of that gun again. Unfortunately, but. You know, the railgun is one of the most memorable elements of this film. And I love the shot in the uh, third act of the film where, you know, Arnold breaks out from the floor and he grabs two railguns and he just fires, you know, these killing bad guys left and right. It's great stuff. I just love the railgun. Again, it's one of my favorite movie weapons. But the third act is, you know, is exciting. I mean, then you get to the very end of the film where you think that James Caan's going to get away with it because, you know, Arnold gets into a van. They blow the van up. Um, but, you know, James Caan's in this limo on the tracks and he gets hit by a train. And that's, you know, again, great comeuppance for James Caan because you think that he's going to get away with it, but he doesn't. You know, you've just been erased. <laughs> so that's a great way to end the movie. You know, he caught a train. <laughs> and, again, fast pace. And, I, you know, the stuff at the zoo. You know, there's some good action at the zoo. I almost forgot about that. Um, and that's where you get the crocodile bit. Which, you know, for me, that's the weakest point of the film. You know, where the crocodiles are, you know, eating some of the villains and... And there's some very weak uh, CGI in those scenes, you know, with the crocodiles. Again, that's to me the weakest point of the film. Uh, but it doesn't ruin the movie or anything. But it's just like a, you know, thing that I don't really, I don't really care about the CGI crocodiles. I mean, you could tell there's a little bit of practical there, but it does, it is bothersome a little bit. I like the line, you know, your luggage. That's a good line. <laughs> and there's a lot of good lines in here. I mean, a lot of good like fun lines and quotes and again you know the film it never stops i mean it's like a almost a two-hour runtime but once you start it keeps going and you know good score by alan silvestri i really enjoyed the score here uh again i mentioned the ending and all that it's just you know 
the action, there's a lot of the great action set pieces. I mean, for a budget of 100 million, you know, you should have, you know, a lot of big action set pieces and stuff. And it's, uh, there's a lot of spectacle here with the action here. Like, there's a lot of, you know, spectacle with the action throughout the movie. And you can definitely tell with this budget and stuff. And uh, like I said, I don't know why they made the sequel. Like, why couldn't we have gotten a sequel back in the day? You know, back around the time, like when they did the sixth day, you know? Like, if I had to choose between a sequel to Eraser or the sixth day, I'd rather see a sequel to Eraser. Um... I mean, it made some. It made money, so I don't see why didn't they. But it would have been interesting. Uh, not a direct video sequel, but I mean, as far as like little side notes and stuff. So the role of John Kruger was originally offered to Stallone, and he hated the script, turned it, you know, turned the film down, and then he went to work on Copland. And I wonder what Stallone would have done in this movie. And apparently, like, there was some uh, Rocky production. Like, between Arnold and the director, there was, like, they had a bit of a Rocky relationship. Uh, but I thought the film turned out well, you know, despite that. So there's a couple of things to mention right there. So I think Chuck Russell, he, he likes the movie when... He's asked about it. Uh, you know, he's pleased with the results of the film. So, hey, that's cool. You know, Chuck Russell, you know, he liked, he likes the movie still. And overall thoughts, I mean, Eraser, it's an entertaining action film that definitely feels like a throwback in a way, you know, to his 80s stuff. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's a again entertaining popcorn action film. It's a great cast, great action, fast pace. Um, Arnold does a great job and good score and you know great villain James Caan does a great job here. So yeah, that's my review of Eraser. Uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching and have a good day.